Good day and welcome to your favorite sport program on TV Plus Sport. Exciting moment definitely we are going to have today on the show. I'm sure a lot of our viewers across the globe are really taking to this particular time to see what we have um, for them on today's show. It's been so much issues we got to many, many issues going on in the world of sport, especially in Nigeria. But we're taking our mind off several issues that has to do with Victor Sime, has to do with Finidi George, technical fighter away from football, um, the um, Athletic Federation of Nigeria going for um, the Senior Athletic Championship in Cameroon, the whatever is happening around football. Well, take, take your mind away of this because you've been hearing so much of that in the past um, few days. I will not talk to someone that has done so well for himself, a professional football player, Tayo Edu, that plays for Charlton Athletic as a defender. It's good to have you on the show, Tayo. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, yes, let, let's start. Um, it's, you are here in Nigeria f um, some few weeks um, ago. Um, tell us about your visit and is that the first time you'll be visiting Nigeria? Um, I really enjoyed my visit. That's the first time I've been able to go back to Nigeria since before COVID. So it has been uh, quite a long period. Um, it was a short visit. I was only in Lagos for six days in total. But I managed to get a lot done. Um, I managed to meet a lot of people. Um, I was able to meet with an academy while I was down there, which was very exciting for me. And I'm sure the boys there enjoyed their time. But um, yeah, I learned a lot during the stay. So uh, somewhere that I'll definitely be looking forward to going back to in the near future. OK, so what, what did you take away from that visit? Uh, we have you visiting teams and um, doing so many things, advising them. So what's that thing you took away from that visit to ensure that, um, that it's very close to your heart? Uh, for me personally, it just allowed me to see how much um, potential that there is in Nigeria. And that's just from one academy alone that I was able to visit. Um, and I feel like it's important for someone like me in the position that I am to help children like that however I can to, to learn um, ways in which they can improve themselves and do what I can to bring them sort of exposure to allow them to play on bigger platforms. Okay, now, now, now let's go um, ask this. Um, you're a professional football player and um, even before the show, a lot of people saw you and like, oh, they know you, oh, you this, you that, and um, it shows how much you've done for yourself. Um, even right now for my WhatsApp status where I indicated they are going to be my guest and every other social media platform, there have been a lot of comments about um, you and the love incident they remember in, in your career. But let me say this, is, is it the, the intention from the beginning was to be a professional football player from onset? Um, I would say so, yeah, unintentionally, I guess. From such a young age, um, I, I was in love with the sport. And then during my, later, my early years of school, um, I was picked up by Fulham Academy at the age of about 11. So before I even knew um, about the full-time commitments and things like that, I was just so in love that it's just something I always saw myself doing. So before I even had the idea of it being a profession and the things that come with that, um, it was just something that I enjoyed doing and loved so much that I, I always thought it would be a part of my journey. Okay, interesting. Uh, at what time did you realize, you know, we, we take career um, part and we realize that what we are doing is for us. This is the moment we are talking about. At what time did you realize that you intend to be a professional football player? What time, do, whether you chose an environmental factor that gave you that indication or a personal factor that gave you that indication that, yes, I want to do this for the rest of my life? I would say it was about... Um... 15, 16, when I started the scholarship at Fulham. Um, I would say before that, it was a lot just a passion and enjoying it. Whereas when I hit that age, I would say the commitment of having you sign a more important, I'd say, contract, and this, is, this becomes full-time. This is something that you start doing every single day. And there's expectation on you to go out there and do better and improve yourself. And um, it, looks, it looks good for the club as well. Um, I would say that's when... For me, it became a decision like, no, this is something I really want to do and it's something that I enjoy doing. Oh, okay. Um, you, you're part of the historical team that did so well for the English um, team in under-19 European Championship. Um, this is, that was the first time the um, English team under-19 won um, the European Championship against Portugal in the final. 
you are part of the team. W what does that mean to you? Is, is that the biggest in your career so far at that moment? What, what does that uh, mean to you, winning that trophy? I remember um, that moment. I remember that for the rest of my life. It was massive. Definitely one of the biggest achievements of my career so far. Um, it meant a great, great lot to me. Um, not only to me, my family and that group of players, I'll, I'll always remember them. I'm still in contact with a lot of those players now. And of course, you're against some of the best players in the world at that time um, and at that age. Uh, so knowing that you can go toe to toe with those sorts of players and come out on top, um, it's very beneficial. And I, there's a lot that I learned as an individual playing against different playing styles, because as you can imagine, different nations have different ways of doing things. And, and yeah, it, it was just a big experience and it's something that I've carried and taken a lot of um, experience, uh, experience from those into things that I'm still doing today. Okay. What, what would you have done? Um, you still have a very bright future. You're a very young man, uh, football the, your age, and um, so many things that need to be done. And um, what impact do you think um, we'll have, have right now? Because we know in 2019 or 2017, if I'm mistaken, Southgate, the present coach of the Three Lions, you're among the young stars that were called to replace some certain players that were injured. Um, I think you're still with Fulham there, uh, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, and um, you're called to be part of this. Is, is that compared to, can you compare that? How, how did you feel about that invitation? And um, is it in the same level when you compare it to what you achieved by winning the European Under-19 Championship? I know you must be so happy. Tell us your feeling when you're listed as part of the young stars that were called um, to make a replacement from the, for those players. That was another proud moment, and of course, I remember. Um, I remember the training sessions. Um, uh, I think, in comparing it to the European Championship, I guess it's just it's just one of those things. Benefits come hand in hand. So, when you're when you're in good form and things are going well, things like that opportunities can appear, and you just have to be um, ready to take those opportunities. And that's something you learn um, as a young professional that you just have to be prepared to to grab things with both hands and just. Um, take, take the opportunities that come your way. Um, being able to, of course, the, the England national team have some of the best players in the world. So that was a good experience again for myself. And um, yeah, it was just for me at the time, I remember being excited and just taking the opportunity. Okay. Um, was that the ripple effect of um, the under-19 European Championship? Um, you could say so. I guess the decision is theirs. So they decide who comes and for what reason. Uh, it could be positional sense. They might have a preference. They might want this player over that player. But I think um, I, I, I wouldn't see why you wouldn't take players that are doing doing well at their level and just um, help help kick them on if there's an opportunity to do so. So I, 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 you could say that, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you, you said you started with Fuam from the academy. They give you a scholarship. Fuam saw that time in you. And that is what um, we hope that um, we can get in this part of our world where a football team can, um, can go and look for an academic player and give them scholarship while you combine school with um, education with um, soccer. But now they, they also um, brought you to, to be part of the main team in Fuam. You, your senior professional um, was um, in a league game which um, against Fuam, the League Cup, and um, you did so well. What does that also mean to you? Because a lot of people expected that you'd have stayed longer in Fuam um, since you've been part of them for a long time. I think that was a, a big day for me. I remember my family was able to attend the game because it wasn't the fixture wasn't too far from where I grew up in London and where my family resides. So I remember them being there. And I guess that's the first step to, OK, I'm now a professional footballer. I remember my dad always says, um, you're not just because you've signed a professional contract um, at the age of 17 mm. until you step on that pitch and you're actually playing professional football. That it doesn't really count. So he, he always used to sort of drill that into me. Um, so in my head, that was sort of ticking the box that, OK, that's the start of this, this journey. And I always look forward to adding to those sort of achievements throughout. So, uh, so we also said what, what, you, you didn't stay so long in, in Fuam. I'm sure um, a lot of people have thought that um, it should always start in the level since you've been part of Fuam for a long time, that um, your intention of being 
um, a Fuam legend at that moment for you to stay longer in Fuam. A lot of things must have happened, but what was the reason why? Um, I, I'm sure you barely you spent a season or two there about. So what really happened at that moment? Um, I think I was going through a period at the age of uh, 19, 20, where I was struggling to get consistent game time, um, whether it be because of the team really performing well or the manager not thinking I was ready. Um, but I just found that I wanted to play week in, week out. Once I had that sort of first taste of first-team football, um, it's something that I wanted on a consistent basis and Fulham were able to facilitate that. So I found that I had to go elsewhere to try and get those minutes. And I would say it was a mutual sort of agreement. Um, I respected the manager's decision and the club's decision at the time, but you just have to be honest with yourself in certain moments in, in football. It's a short career and you have to try and maximise all the opportunities you can to go and play football. So me not being happy in that um, situation that I was in at the time in terms of um, game time and minutes on the pitch, um, it was down to me, my family and my agent to go and find a solution to where I would be able to find more minutes. Oh, interesting. Yeah, you keep saying that family. I mean, um, I've, sp I've spoken to a lot of footballers, especially Nigerian footballer. You keep mentioning your family. Um, and my next question is, is going to ask um, about... Um, how you got your biggest motivations? I mean, it, it seems your family have been part of your life from a very young age. Is that your biggest motivation? Uh, I would say so, yeah, definitely. Um, they've always been there. And for as long as I can remember, um, my mom, my dad have always pushed me to, to um, do as well as I can in this career. And it's always been about what what's the best thing that they can do to help me and help me go and push on and be because they know my dream is to play as high as I can and be the best I can be. So the family support has always been a motivation and the sacrifices that they've had to make so that I can be here today. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the time when I'm going out there, it's, it's a lot deeper to me than what I'm going out there to do. It's, it comes from what they've done to get me here in the first place and mm -hmm. to show them that it's, it's all been for, for a very good reason. Okay, now let, let's slip it. Let's, let's go to the future a bit. So we'll come back um, to, to a bit of um, how you started. Um, is, is there going to be um, re plans for you to return back to, to the Premier match here? Because we know that um, there's a large followership of um, Nigerians as to do with Premier match. The, the followership is. M I, I think that's probably the biggest in, in Africa when it comes to um, looking at Nigerian followership. Which African country followed the Premier match more? And I have to tell the Nigerians, and um, Nigeria's way of um, idolizing the Nigerian um, person based on the club. Like when Kanu moved to Arsenal, there was a big boast of Nigerians joining Arsenal and supporting Arsenal. And um, we also have um, Mikel Obi and Chelsea and all that. It has been way like that. And um, if you have stayed longer in, in Fuam, probably, um, a lot, Fuam would have actually gotten a big junk of um, Nigerian followership there. But my question is this, is there a return to the Premiership soon? I would hope so. My dream is obviously to play as high as I can. I haven't been able to make my Premier League debut yet, unfortunately, but it's something that I'm working towards definitely. Um, funnily enough, uh, my uncle and my dad both support Premier League clubs, different Premier League clubs, but I understand what you're saying with the Nigerian following. Um, me, myself, I also support, uh, I'm an Arsenal fan, so I understand where you're coming from in that sense. Um, but yeah, of course, it is a dream for me to go and play in the Premier League. And I understand that with that, there's potential for a following to come from um, Nigeria. But for me, it's, it's maximising my career and doing the best I can to achieve that. And yeah, it would be massive for me. Okay, definitely. Um, I'll let you know that it is not just going to be massive for you. It will be massive for Nigerians. And you know, the way Nigerians and everybody around, you'll be seeing Tayo Edu and Tayo Edu everywhere uh, because, you know, it's something that Nigerians do a lot, unscripted, unscripted. <laughs> it's, it's something they do a lot, unscripted. You see them following. The, and I'm sure if you are to be in a club, a little bit, even if it's going to be in the championship, I tell you, they come down there a bit. And you understand, even if it's not going to be in the premiership, you are in a club in the championship. I think championship is next to... Um, the Premier League, and once you come, yeah, once you come there, no matter where it is, even though if that's going to be a starting point for you to come to the Championship, Nigerian comes down there to dig for their own and say, "Oh, Tayo Edu, it's somewhere in the Premiership, it's somewhere in even because we had the like of um, in Iannacho and um, Ndidi going to the Championship, though they are back when the um, yeah. Leicester City got relegated. So 
Um, we hope that to, even with this, I'm sure, even with this talking with you, a lot of Nigerians will always want to give a call. Oh, that man, that man, we want the same, we want to do that. So my next question is this. If Nigerians come to you, NFF, Nigerian Football Federation, I know that you play for the under-19 side, the three Lions under-19, um, I think, or the age grade. Um, we also know it's had in Nigeria in the, in, in the past. Victor Moses also, yeah. also played so well and did so well. Um, for that. And he, did end up, he ended up playing for Nigeria. Are you looking forward to representing Nigeria in the next future? Yeah, that's another goal of mine that I would be happy to achieve in my career. Um, I'm sure my family will be proud of me once again. And as I've mentioned before, um, I've told you how important it is for me to go out there and make them proud. But um, that would be a very big achievement for me if I was able to do that. And it's, it's something that I'm working towards. Okay. Well, Chichen is going to be bigger because, you know, as a footballer in your, in your stage, there's so many choices to make and decisions to make. And um, one has to be very, very careful. And I always know that um, a footballer doesn't just have one spectacular moment. I tell you, a footballer always have several sweet, spectacular moments. I'm not comparing this. If you have the option of playing for Nigeria or going back to the Premiership, what will you have um, done? Well, question. Um, <laughs> yeah, what would you have I, done? I would say, I would say, <laughs> I'm cheating a little bit, but I would say going to the Premiership because I think going and playing in the Premiership will give me um, the pathway to go and play for Nigeria. Yeah, that's a smart, that's a smart term. That's a <laughs> smart term. That's a smart term re response. And now we now. So what, what, what's, your, what's your plan? I mean, if, if you play for Nigeria today, and um, are, are you going to be, because we know that there's a theory, I don't know how factual that theory is, that uh, is when, not only for three lions, is, is, it's for Jamin um, too, for other countries too, that um, is when they miss, they miss the selection for three lions, that's when they consider playing for the country of their bet or the other country they have options for. Um, how, how true is that? Because I, I'm sure that, um, is it because they are not good enough or is it, is it a matter of choice? Um, I can't speak for everyone in this sense, but it's something that obviously I see and we would all see as players. Um, I think one of the biggest factors is, is the exposure that you get in the competition. So. Playing in, obviously, the Euros is being played currently. Playing in the Euros gives you um, a lot of exposure and it's something that there's probably more eyes on than playing in the uh, AFCON. So I would, I would say that's, that's probably one reason. I think another is, and it's something that I discussed with uh, my family while spending time in Lagos, um, that a lot of players that play in Europe and grew up playing in Europe um, haven't had that exposure to their African nation. So for them, um, they see the European nation that might have called them as, as let's say, uh, more home or see it as more heritage in their family. So the discussion that I had with my family, and I think it was my cousin that I was having the, the conversation with, we just said it's important for players with African backgrounds to visit during the time that they're, they're um, growing and building their career, it's still important to return home and understand where they're coming from. Mm. Because in that sense, it will give them more incentive to go and represent that nation. Oh, okay. Uh, now, now let, let, let me say this. Let, let's use um, Bukayo Saka. Bukayo Saka, um, I think it's because he's, he's an exceptional player. That's why the three Lions have to call him in. Um, and I'm sure there's so many exceptional players. That's my opinion. That's my opinion that he's an exceptional player because if Bukayo Saka wasn't an exceptional player, um, the three Lions would have dropped him. And I also asked myself the same thing with Alex Iwobi. Um, that preference, all those guys, even Victor Moses, I might be wrong, but I think that preference is the three Lions. And um, the three Lions didn't pick them because they're not exceptional. And what do you think worked for Bukayo Saka that is from onset that Bukayo Saka played for England and not even thinking of considering playing for for the Super Eagles? Um, like I said, I can't speak for these individuals, but from where I, from my standpoint, looking in, um, I would just say it's the exposure and 
just the opportunity to play alongside some of the best players in the world um, it is massive for him, uh, not only for footballing benefits, but I'm, I'm assuming for his brand is doing massive things. So I would say these things are taken to part. But as I said, I can't, I don't know um, what's going through his head. I don't know what he's been exposed to. So, um, yeah, he's made the decision and he is doing well. He's doing very well. So I wish him all the best. Yeah, OK. Um, definitely, Nigeria also wish you to back tired. Uh, you, you are a defender, and you know the defending role has evolved a long time ago. You know, defenders when that they're no more longer statistic; they are not just on the point. You see the defender going the f up front from the wings, from the flanks, in the middle. That's how the game has evolved. Unlike in the eighties, seventies, sixties, the defender shouldn't go beyond the midfield until we, uh, we they created the central defender that has the opportunity of going into the, the role of a liberal has really been diluted. It is, the liberal is, is, is goes beyond just staying in the defending role. So what, what, uh, how do you match out your, your, your playing style? Who do you look forward to your playing style? How do you match out your playing style? And which of the defense line do you play? So um, the season that just passed had... Uh, been playing left back for the most part of the season. Um, but during my career, from I would say the age of 14, I've been moved from uh, left back to midfield frequently. And most of the time, it's at the manager's discretion. Um, I've never gone in and said, I, I want to play here, I want to play there. I'm, I want to just be on the pitch and be representing the team that I'm playing for. I don't really have a preference. Um, even during the, uh, the under 19 euros, that's the, all the games there I played in the midfield. So it's somewhere that I've been moved to um, from each position. Um, I would say players that I look, look up to when I'm playing as a left back are the likes of um, Zinchenko, Cancelo. I know Cancelo can play left and right back, but just that style of play for me, I look to him and I'm like, okay, I try and pick up little things, notice um, the positions that he picks up, the passes that he tries to play. Because I see myself as, as you said, the game's really changed for um, defenders and fullbacks, especially. And I see myself as a really attack minded, forward thinking um, player, which is why managers also see my traits and think that would be beneficial in the midfield. So I do not see myself as quite versatile. And yeah, those are the types of players. I always look at midfielders as well, because I think from a fullback, you get in the sort of areas that midfielders might get into, and you need to be able to have the tools to get out of certain situations or make certain things happen, so... Yeah, um, yeah. The, the biggest challenge in your career, I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a massive career, it's a career that has been notable, there have been so many good sides of your career and um, so many opportunities. To me, it seems like um, you, you, you are yet, um, you are going to still have the world on your feet because um, you, you, you keep making so much sense about the, the, your time on the field of play. And um, it's not easy for them to have under the 19 championship and um, you're included in the team of the season. It's not easy for the scouting forum to see you and they say, yes, this is what it's for. It's, so it's, not, it's not an easy task. But what's the biggest challenge for you so far in, in your career? Because I know there'll be more challenges for you because I, I just saw a clip of um, Ronaldo um, saying the European Cup, the one, I think in 2016, is the happiest moment in his life. And I'm like, wow. Mm -hmm. You understand? You, you probably... <laughs> so, so it's very difficult for, for a player to have just one moment as the biggest moment in your career. So what's the challenge for you so far? Or something you think you, must, you should have done in a different way than where you are? Because I know the future is beside you. And most especially, there's nobody, nobody that is an Nigerian player whether born or mixed parents, that is not known internationally, that's a, 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 um, a default. I tell you that, that's a default. Whether you play in Greece, whether you play in, um, um, in, in um, Turkey, there's a kind of default attached to Nigerian players. That wherever you play, that's um, that aura that people definitely have to know you. But before, before I go further, what's your own biggest challenge for you so far? Um, I would say one of the biggest challenges um, I found, uh, not the season, just past the season before, my last year at Blackburn, where I just struggled to get any sort of game time. Um, and the times that I did 
get the opportunity to play. I thought I did, I did well. Um, people around me were saying you did well. And I feel like I have an honest uh, group of people around me where um, they're, they're not afraid to be honest with me and say, look, you could have done better here or this is not like you're not at your level. You need to up it. Um, and I wasn't getting those sorts of messages. Um, but the manager, of course, we know it's down to the manager. Um, he, he, I wasn't, I wasn't favoured by him. And I thought, for me, that was really challenging. Initially, I thought, okay, get my head down and do the work, and things will, things will come to light. Um, we, as we know, a football season is long. You might have periods where you're not playing. Yeah. In or whatnot will, will mean that there's availability there, and you'll get your opportunity at some point. But I just found that um, at that period, underneath that manager. Um, that just never happened. And I really struggled with that, especially knowing and believing that um, I was doing all I could to get those opportunities. And as you know, in football, if you're not playing, there's no way of being noticed. There's no way of um, showing what you're, you're um, able to do on the, on the pitch. Um, and that was a really big challenge for me. And I, I, I was frustrated the whole time, speaking with family, speaking with friends, um, and just, being, just having to get through that phase um, and just... just continue to go in every day and try and be positive, knowing that, okay, I'm working for myself at this point. Um, when the opportunity comes, I need to be ready. Um, that was that was probably one of the toughest challenges of my career. Okay, de definitely, because we know m most um, great players definitely have um, such um, challenges. Um, so so l l let me look at this. I think there's something about um, players that um, play for England or have played... Um, for, for the three lions in whatever age grade. It's the mo mobility, the movement, geographical mobility of labor. We don't see them going to other country to play. And um, I think um, the, the limited players that you see um, leaving England to play for Spain. Um, yeah, even the, the, the top notch players that we do talk about, there's few of them that you see them leaving um, the, the country, I mean England, whatever, whether at the um, EPL, EFL, or whatever the stage. Are you also going to follow that line that even if you have an offer, if you have an offer outside Spain, wherever it may be, are you looking for to, to, to leave the show of um, UK to, to play? Um, I think that's something that's happening uh, more and more often. I've got friends that have had spells abroad. Some have returned now. Some some have gone abroad and thought, this this is my pathway. Um, I'd rather stay here and, and do what I can and play as high as I can at this level. Um, for me personally, it's not something that I would shy away from. There's been sort of conversations in the past where things just haven't come from it. But it's always something that I've looked to do. And I think it is still important to go and play elsewhere um, if you get that opportunity. Um, you look at, um, for example, Lookman, he went abroad and he's playing on the bigger stage still. So sometimes that's just where your pathway um, takes you. So um, it's definitely not something that I would turn down. Um, it just it just needs to be the right opportunity. And um, I need to have the right conversations behind it. And it's something that, if I'm honest, I would look forward to doing. Oh, OK. And uh, um, is there still opportunity? I mean, opportunity, it's futuristic. And it's also something that we talk about in the present. Is there any opportunity still you think um, that you can also play for the Three Lions as, 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 a, as it goes? Is there more opportunity for you to play for the Three Lions? Um, of course, there's possibility because I haven't um, made a senior debut at international level. So um, we'll see. We'll see what comes. I think, I'm, I think for me personally, I know one of the most important things is trying to um, play as high as I can at club level and that gives you the best opportunity to go and play um, for for wherever you can represent internationally. So my targets right now are so just... Let, let, let me also say this, let me also say this because um, a, lo a lot of comments will be coming in after now um, about um, how, how good we should be. So let, let, let me ask you this, do you, do you think um, there's so much opportunity also, I mean, as the NFF, the Nigerian Football Federation, has anybody come to meet you in regards to playing for the Super Eagles of Nigeria? Uh, no, not, not so far in my career. But um, as I said um, earlier, it's something that I'll be looking forward to. Um, but I know if you look at the team, um, there's a lot of talent in there. Um, the, the players that represent are playing in the best leagues in Europe. So 
Um, of course, you see some big talent in there. Um, so I know for me personally, if, if it's something that I want to achieve, those are the sort of levels I, want, I need to get to at sort of club level. No, oh, okay, okay. So, for presently, tell us your experience in, in Charlton Athletic. I think Charlton Athletic were in the Premiership some season back. Yeah, and um, they are not, they've gone beyond the Championship. They are now in League One. Yeah. So, that, that means they, they have a hard fight to, to get back to the Championship before they get to the Premiership. Yeah. Okay. Now, now so, so tell us about life um, as um, you've got to what you want right now, which is also a playing time. So tell us about the last season in, in Charlton Athletic. So it was a tough last season for us, to be honest. Um, we really underachieved as a group. Um, we, we managed to go, f uh, to go for three managers. We were on our third manager from last season by the time the season came to an end. Um, but as an understanding we all have with, with each other that we really underachieved um, because with the potential in the group and the ability, the, the ability that we had in the squad, um, we expected a lot more from the season that just passed. Um, going into the next season, we still have those aspirations of getting promoted and competing at the top end. And as you said, Charlton is a is a very big club. Um, it wasn't so long ago that they were in the Premier League, so um, the fan base obviously put that pressure on the club to achieve more. And it's understanding from us as players that yeah, we are not where. Um, we think we should be, but football doesn't hand out freebies, so you have to go and earn your way back there, and it's not something that we're afraid to do as a group. Interesting. Um, it's true. That's one thing about football. Football is not um, an hand out um, freebies. You, you can never say what will happen next. You can never, never say what will happen next. And it's a life, it's a life decision that um, one has to be careful. And one thing about um, footballers is, should I move or I should not move? You know, that's just two things. And the third one is the manager. You might be having decision, should I move? I should not move. And there's the third one that we don't talk about most of the time. The manager that wants you to move or stay regardless to whether you want to move or stay. And that's a big factor in, um, in football. Uh, as I see it, except you tell us, uh, I'm sure your agent will probably be trying as much as possible to take you, because I see you as a player bigger than the club you play for. I, I, that's a personal opinion. I, I see you that, but you know, you won't play in time. Um, are there offers in between this time you had, um, uh, between your time um, in, um, in Charter Athletic? Is, is there, have there been offer coming to take you away from that place? Uh, currently, I haven't heard anything, to be honest. Um, I don't know if my agent's working behind the doors and getting things done um, but right now I'm happy as I said I'm playing and I think the club um, as we know we're underachieving and with where we expect to be I think it's a good enough platform for where I am in my career to take me to where I want to be so I wouldn't want to rush elsewhere or be elsewhere um, that it might look better for some um, reasons um, when I know that what I have here is, is a good enough platform for where I want to be to, to go and excel and be where, um, where I think I, be at the level that I think I should be playing at. Okay, in interesting. Now, now is the time is no longer our friend as I let you go tired. But um, the road to stardom, it's, um, it's, it's a big tax. Nigerians looked forward to you. You came home, you saw that um, the, the, the man they're looking forward to is also aspiring and I'm sure um, to be to be in the Premiership to do much much better. Millions of Nigerians are watching you right now. I tell you, millions of Nigerians are. What, what message do you have um, for for them? Because where you are, they want to be there. That place you think you also need to leave, or anywhere you want to be, they also want to have a taste of that. So, what advice will you give? I mean, because now we talk about combining education with sports. How, how, how did you scale through? How, how did you combine the two together? It should be so easy over there, but how, how were you able to, to hold the two big um, deciding factors in life, a career and education? Um, it's not easy. Um, you have to grow and be mature. Um, I think from a young age, I, I made these commitments, and of course you have the, the support from people around you. 
Um, but I think just having the, the end sight um, in your vision constantly just helps to, to make those small steps day by day um, to achieve where you want to be. Um, of course, it's a, it's a long journey. And even me till now, um, I visited the academy and I know some of the players there would be thinking, that's exactly where I want to be. But then me, myself, I'm thinking, I'm also looking at another target. So I think constantly you have to keep that end goal in sight and just keep pushing every day to get to it. And of course, there's going to be backward steps. I remember I had a coach that said, uh, football career is like a roller coaster and it's literally up and down. You always have setbacks, whether it's injury, working with a manager that um, doesn't favour you or what, for whatever reason. But um, you have to just keep that end goal in sight and know that this is my focus and this is the reason I wake up and go and do the work that I need to do every day. OK, now, now uh, as we round up, um, your both parents are Nigerians. Uh, my mom's from St. Vincent in the Caribbean. OK, your mom is a Caribbean. And um, that's... Um, uh, what, what, what part of the Caribbean? I mean, what nation? Is it the Caribbean nation or...? St. Vincent. OK, oh, OK. So it's not, um, it's, some, it's, not, it's not so much of a footballing nation that you think you want mm -hmm. to play for them. But they've got, they've got national theme? Um, no, I think the, the, the national team is, is not, <laughs> there's no team. Okay, because, because I, I, Alaba, Alaba is from Austria. Yeah. Um, and Alaba is presently, in the, Alaba, in the past, we don't really know Austria as a footballing nation, you know. Um, a lot of people get to know Austria as a footballing nation um, through Alaba, what he has done for himself. So, uh, and uh, Alaba had the opportunity of actually playing for Nigeria. I don't know the story, but I think he chose Austria, and I think it's a very good um, decision. And, uh, but you right now, um, you, you don't mind anyone that comes? Um, I would love to play for the Super Eagles, to be honest. I would love to. Okay. I think, as I said to you, I think one of the biggest things um, for players that play abroad and um, maybe play... Uh, grew up in Europe and started playing in Europe is having that um, connection with their home nation. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, that is a big factor in where a lot of players would choose to play for um, nations abroad. Mm -hmm. But um, I think it is important to have that connection. Okay, yeah, before I let you go, one question. Your, 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 um, the best, and I hope that's going to be the last question because I'm already engulfed with... Um, so much you tell me. I'm so excited and Nigerians are excited that we are speaking to Tayo Edu, um, who has done so well for himself. And uh, don't, don't be surprised when I leave the streets, when I leave the stage right now, and I'm seeing somebody putting Tayo Edu at the back of a jersey. That's how sometimes Nigeria can be so funny. Um, <laughs> now, 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 let them say, what's the most intelligent player you know? I have mine. That um, is, is not about um, popularity, but about a player that is very, very intelligent on the ball. Um, I have several of them that are intelligent. And when we talk about intelligent players, these are players that, 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 that make things happen. They think on the ball. They know what to do at that moment. Well, well, to you, can you mention two or three players that are very intelligent players? Uh, I'm not talking about players as... Um, yes, but I, I don't want to know the best players, just intelligent players. Because in every field and in our career, whether engineering and all that, they are that persons that, that are intelligent on what they do because of the way they do it. So for you, who is one of the most intelligent players? We can mention three of them. Um, I would say currently um, Tony Cruz for me. Okay, Tony Cruz, okay. Uh, for Germany and Real Madrid. I think Luka Modric as well for uh, Croatia and Real Madrid. Um, third, I would say... I would put uh, De Bruyne. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I, I, can, I can understand that. Um, I, I hope I have an opinion yet too, but um, I, I always want to prefer player like Ozil, Mesut Ozil, as a very intelligent yeah. player. Um, if, if he, he does his things with flair, very, very intelligent. Um, I also want to consider Suarez as a very, very intelligent player. Um, these are players that they think on the ball, but those are my opinions anyway. Um, Tayo, um, thank you very much um, for your time. We appreciate so much of your time. Uh, hopefully you. that um, the next time we're going to talk about is going to be a very big move to a big club you desire. And uh, definitely 
that more times you also have to call you to, to tell us the updates about yourself and I'm um, hoping that um, you come back home frequently and associate yourself with, the, with, with, with people so that they also know you very, very well. And, um, but now you've spoken with us, I'm sure you're no more a stranger to, you're no more a stranger to, to Nigeria. So thank you very much. We hope to see you in this studio soon. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, thank you very much. Yes, uh, we've been speaking with um, Tayo Edu. Tayo Edu um, has done so well for himself, talking about the past, the present, and the future. So many future in front of this young star that has done so well. Presently, he's in the League One playing for Charter Athletic, but he has done so well. He has his Pova on the 19 European Championship. The ever one that England has won, he was in the team of the tournament of that partner. He has played for Fulham, so many things, and um, he's playing for Charter Athletic. Is not just um, his versatility is known in the under 19 European Championship. He's not just a defender, he can play anywhere in the world. Um, you, you rightly know how, how, how good he is. So, so many things we hope in the future we have him in our studio. That's um, away from um, Tyler Edu and football. We now go to the Boston, Boston Celtic, um, how they won the 18 um, NBA title championship. Very, very interesting uh, moment for them. Um, these are stories that you don't get elsewhere. These are stories that, um, you, that can ignite you that the future is bright, that um, we are not going to talk about the regulars when it comes to the NBA. But Boston Celtic has done so well for not just the city of Boston, but for individuals who has aspire to, be, to come together and give that city a very interesting moment. So, but that's how I'm going to draw the cutting for today's program. Um, I'll leave you with an um, interesting moment on how Boston um, Celtic did so well for themselves. I'm Mudashi Yushitu. Same time tomorrow, we'll be giving you all what you need to know in the world of sport. In the world of sport. Enjoy this. <laughs>